Aha, we should be live, but my video capture is not working for some reason. So, uh, well, just give me a, a, a second. Dear viewers who are there. Well, I trust you deal with the technical issues and I just sit here and yeah, I'm very Big tempted Lord. to move on to another software some someday because we tried something this weekend for uh why is it not working? I have faith in you, Callum. Thank you. It was working all fine until now. Now people are gonna be bored to just to hear me say stuff like that. I don't know. It's a pity because I'm I'm very proud today. It's the first time I did a proper overlay. I I did it the way it's supposed oh. to be done. Window capture. Everyone should be able to see it. Okay. There. Yeah, it's really bad practice for, for a streamer. We're recording, we're streaming, so people should see us now. Well, they can see me now. Okay, so let's get started and while you, you answer me, uh, we'll, I will fiddle with the, the visual. So, uh, welcome to... Saying Gaff that they can see me, but not you. No, this is the opposite way around right now. So They so can see you, but not me. Yeah, they can see me, me, but not you yet. But just give it a second. But uh, yeah, we, we can start uh, regardless. I, I'm going to play with your window as soon as um, it's back on. So it's Monday. It's uh, past. It's almost 2 p.m. here in London. And my son is asleep having a snap, which is a perfect time to do a Café Rollist. And uh, there's kind of a... a team developing at Café Rollis at the moment because I have so many guests who come to tell me about online conventions and today we've got Dasha from London RPG Community uh, who's going to tell us about one of their own. Dasha, could you introduce yourself uh, briefly to uh, to the people watching us? Hi, it's me. It's me, Dasha. Um... I use pronouns she, her, and I'm an admin and organizer of London RPG community. We're a gaming club based in London, but currently with the world situation, we are running all of our games online. Um, I am a game master and I recently also designed my first game. So I'm also a game designer. So Callum, please only refer to me as Miss Game Designer. I request that. That's yeah. my request. I've got the... Okay, great. I want to do a TikTok video someday with all the people at, at London RPG community who started designing games. I think uh, we got so a, many people. got a handful now, and I think it's fair to say that a, a fair number of them uh, were inspired by Grant Owit and Chris Taylor and their one-page role-playing game, weren't they? Yeah, well, we started kind of getting into it a lot in last year because we were a club that's based mainly on playing one-shot games because we're in London and we want people to be able to come play without committing to a long-running campaigns or um, dip in and out of long-running campaigns in a sandbox manner. Um, so one-page RPGs is really our jam because that fits with our format of um, running separated games. So we tried quite a few and our players are absolutely ridiculous. I love them, but it's absolute chaos when you run one page RPGs. And if there any kind of um, opportunity to make jokes and just completely put the game off the rails, they will absolutely do it. Um, so we started trying some one page RPGs with our players and they loved it and we kept doing it and then we asked Grant Howard uh, who we know um, a little bit uh, we, we knew a little bit at the time if he wanted to come and run his some of his games just for fun and even maybe play he was actually really keen to play as well so he came to run a few and then 
from that from there it's just started escalating and now a lot of people are writing their own one page rpgs be included and play testing is a big area of um things that we do and it's kind of started with that and now progressed into more full kind of full games full written rpgs so yeah definitely definitely super a lot of fun and at the lrc con that i'm here to plug um there's gonna be some games that some of our members designed me included i'm gonna be running my own game and Lixi, who is a good friend of mine, um, is also going to be running their own game about Hogwarts and Harry Potter. And it's just all kinds of fun. So tell me about your game. What is it about? I mean, I know, but right. uh, the viewers might not. Well, you're about to be introduced to the most fabulous game that has ever existed. Because, um, well, my goal in life and in tabletop RPGs is promote fabulousness and fierceness because that's what I believe we should all have more of and Therefore I designed a game based on the most fabulous queen herself Beyonce um, so the point of the game is that you get to be silly and do fabulous things and save the world from some kind of disastrous word wardrobe malfunction or a similar catastrophe and you get to be a Beyonce from a different universe which that's why it's called into the Yonceverse. So did you made up your own uh, rule system or did you hack I, I mean for instance I know even uh, game designers who are professionals or semi-professional like uh, Ursi yeah. Dice he would often hack lasers or, and feelings or, or mm -hmm. one of the game by Grant and, and Chris. Uh, did you hack yeah. something or did you came up, come up with your own rule system? A little bit of both. Um, we kind of were coming from a concept perspective. We wanted um, the game to do a certain thing. And then because, uh, so me and Lixi designed it together and because neither of us are experienced in game design at all, we just started looking for systems that could work with that. And we ended up probably look, finding the most difficult option that can to run, which is diceless. It's based on awarding points, which are called bees, because you oh. know, Beyonce is fan club is called Beehive. So for doing something, you get bees. And if you want to spend them uh, to do something else to progress a plot point you can do that and it's played in scenes so actually i've been lately really really obsessed with all games by avery adler and that's very different theme and very different kind of vibe but i really like the mechanic of having a um type of um kind of class you know um the type of character you can play that has uh, strengths and weaknesses, and they can earn points and also indulge in their weaknesses. Um, okay. So that's that's kind of there's element of that in the game, and also awarding points and uh, reducing points uh, and spending them to do something is also coming from that. And then we really wanted to incorporate, as we call it, B economy. So we kind of <laughs> looked for ways to do that. <laughs> and actually, um, after we thought of that, um, Ursa Dice, uh, who you mentioned, who is a good friend of mine, it kind of helped us um, to look through our design and see if that works, you know, if it's playable at all, because we were like, I have no idea what I'm doing. Um, so yeah, that's that's where it stands. When I told Grant that it's a diceless game, he almost fainted. <laughs> but... <laughs> it, uh... Yeah, uh, uh, one-page RPGs, uh, they're very interesting. Uh, I mean, at the moment, I already mentioned it on Café Rollis, I'm trying to develop my own game, which is more than one page. Uh, the rules would be a couple pages, and then it would be expanded with more stuff. But since then, yes. uh, 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 it started as a joke, uh, as a pun, as many one-page RPGs, but I'm very tempted to develop a one-page RPG based on a, a TikTok I made and a meme uh, which uh, would revolve around uh, Ariana Grande and uh, David Boreanaz. And yeah. it, it would be sort of a, 
a stab at uh, Vampire the Masquerade, it would be Don't Call Me Angel. Mm-hmm. Yep. And nice. uh, it would it would revolve around yeah the David, David Boreanaz being mistaken for a vampire and somehow it would involve Ariana Grande as well. But uh, I need to work out the details. I mean, it can involve yeah. I, I think I, she I w- can be involved in anything. Yeah, I it's think fine. It, it would probably be a hack of uh, Jason Statham's Big Vacation because it's one, one yeah. of my favorite games. Uh, mm-hmm. I think I'm gonna try to run it in French. I, I I'd like to find some streamers. Uh, Fantastic. And running in French and uh, and trying to do an impression yeah. of, uh, you know, have the the ori- the pitch being uh, Jason Statham Big Vacation, but with Jason Statham who speaks only English, and uh, yep. sp- speaking English with, in a weird accent and well, sort of weird, and and having my French players trying to work out what he's actually saying. <laughs> That might be. I uh, see. Yeah. That might be interesting. So, if people want to play, what, what's the title of your game again? Sorry. It's called Into the Universe, and it's going to be released sometime this week, prior to the LRC Con, at which I will be running it for the first time after the playtest. So that's gonna be fun. So tell me, LRC Con, because. Since I was busy with yeah. CyberConf lately, I, I really dropped off uh, the Discord of London RPG community. There, there's too yes, many Discords have. at the moment, all over the place, and there's too much activity all over the place uh, in all those Discords, including just the sub-channel Vampire the Masquerade in London RPG com- community. There's way too much I'm supposed to write for that table. But yeah, what what's the plan? When is it? Uh, to, who can join it? Uh, what's going on? Right. So first of all, scold for dropping off and not being around. <laughs> it's all right. I'm joking. Um, but yeah, we we have missed you on Discord, and hopefully you'll run something with us again soon, um, like your surprise game that you're developing. So well, this, that'd be great. This one, the challenge. Well, is... it's no longer a surprise. Yeah. yeah the, the, this one the challenge is that I really don't know how to to run it online with people filling up cards and so on but uh, if people are interested because the first time I offer it no one seems to have an interest in it I, I'd be keen to run Cats of Cthulhu again but people need to, to express uh, interest uh, I didn't have much, many I players and that. none were from London RPG community last time so but okay uh, very interesting but well uh, that's that's great well well if any of our members are watching now please just tell us if you want us to run cats of cthulhu and we will do it for you yeah that's what we there's a a couple other games i should try running it's just uh yeah zero time for for prep so it's it's next weekend right easter weekend yes so lrc con we call it together at home with lrc um It was originally the idea of one of our um, organizers, Andy, and he had the idea that a lot of people are going to be stuck at home this bang holiday weekend, and a lot of people had to cancel their plans, so they might feel a bit, you know, sad about that, understandably. So we decided to just run a lot of games and entertain people. And at first, we just thought, okay, we'll just put a couple of games up and just do a call around GMs and players who would be interested. And we had 19 games in a day. Wow. Our GMs wanted to run 19 games all together, um, which is more than what we did at D&D for mental health events. <laughs> like, it's crazy. Um, so, yeah, it really boomed. And then at that point, we were like, okay, we need to organize this properly. Um, So, yeah, now it's a proper kind of mini online convention, which is going to happen from Friday the 10th of April till Monday 13th of April. Um, It's going to be afternoon and evening games each day, uh, most of them in parallel. So you cannot play everything, unfortunately, as much as some of our members would love that. Um, But, yeah, there's loads of um, games being run, and they goal of this event is kind of encourage people to try new systems, to, tr- to meet new people, connect with maybe those they haven't met before, maybe some systems that they've been curious about but didn't dare to try. Um, and we're just like really encouraging 
kind of um, open-minded spirit at this event. Um, in line with which, we invited, um, kind of aggressively pushed, <laughs> six new GMs to run some games, uh, who I know will be fantastic, but we're just trying to be proactive in supporting new GMs and people who've been meaning to run games and who are obviously super talented players and um, just need a bit of support in developing kind of in that perspective as well. So yeah, I think it's going to be super, super fun. Um, I'm running two games. Uh, some Most GMs are running two or one game and we're allowing up to four signups per player. So you can sign up up to four games if you like. Uh, so, I mean, idea was once a day, but it doesn't have to be. Uh, and absolutely anyone can sign up because it's such an open-minded event and most people are trying new things anyway. Absolute beginners are welcome. We are running um, a couple of introduction games uh, to our ongoing D&D campaign, which is a drop in and out format, but you need to start with a specific beginner session, which we haven't had for a while. So we're doing a couple of those. Um, but it's mostly just really diverse systems in a diverse um, topics. Like on Sunday evening, the whole evening is going to be games about space because it's an anniversary of First Men in Space. And it's like they're kind of grouped by theme. Um, on Saturday evening, it's going to be um, only new GMs. We're going to like be celebrating them, supporting them, just everybody joining their games. And uh, yeah, so hopefully it'll be really a lot of fun and um, a lot of new connections made. Cool. So if people want to sign up, do they do it uh, the old way, uh, let's say via your, your meetup page or do they join the your Discord? What's the, the best way to do yeah. it? So we made a kind of a special sign up form for this event, uh, which um, you can find on our Twitter and on our meetup. Uh, page. Uh, it's a Google form which you fill in with your it It includes the full schedule of the event and an option to indicate your first, second, third, etc. preference of which games you want to play. Um, after which we kind of assign all people based on their preference and then um, publish games live on Meetup. So you do need to be part of our Meetup group but you just need to say to just click um, join and then we will based on your preference in the form we will put you automatically on the list for the game um so yeah the, the form can be find can be found on our twitter and on our discord and our on our meetup i will put um, a link in the description of, of the video awesome. and uh, yeah. of, of the audio uh yeah to sign up to this event that's really all you need because it has all the information it will ask you to uh be part of our meetup if you're not part of our, our meetup yet. Um, so yeah, that's really all you need to sign up. Cool. So all the games will be held on the Discord itself in, in audio format then? Um, we are leaving that choice up to each GM. Um, so s most of the games I expect will be run through Discord, some via Zoom and some via maybe Hangouts. Um, I'm going to be running my game um, with encouragement of a video call. Obviously, if you don't want to have a video, that's okay, but I'm going to encourage my players to have video because I just personally feel that you connect better if you see other people. And I want to see all of the hair flicks um, <laughs> imitating Beyonce that is physically possible. So uh, I'm, I'm asking about this call because uh after having been through uh, another online convention, I was wondering, sometimes people nowadays, they, they like to to follow a table rather than participate it. Uh, okay. Will there be the option eventually for people on Discord to, uh, because I know, so, so, so I know there's the option of being able to join a chat room without having your microphone on, you know, yeah. like if you're not among the players. You you not allowed to talk. Your 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 microphone is switched off. Do you think there will be table that people can come and listen to on your Discord? Mm. That's a great idea. We haven't yet arranged for that or planned for it, but we'll see how that can be arranged. Probably fairly easily. And but I'll be honest. We are a club that encourages playing. We are the kind of people who say, "Don't watch, come play." 
uh, there is absolutely nothing that's stopping you at this point because geography is not an issue anymore because it's online. Um, apart from, I guess, some people don't have stable internet connection then, of course, but um, we are really believe strongly that please come play and try it for yourself. You'll have an entirely different experience. And especially if you're just starting up, um, I know a lot of people st uh, start getting into role-playing games by watching, but I'm a, I'm a firm believer that best play is by just start playing and explore and be dropped into this pool and just learn how to swim. And it's not, it's not a skill-based game, really. It's just there to have fun. And uh, we try to be as friendly to absolute beginners as physically and you know emotionally possible so i really really encourage people to play instead of watching but um that is definitely definitely an option to just um be able to plug in and listen what's what's happening in the game cool and we'll look into that yeah thanks for the idea like we actually haven't thought about that at all if well, any yeah, of the... my fellow organizers are watching just well great if they're watching are they in the chat room? They should show themselves in the in the if they are in the chat room. Nuno is uh, is in the chat room. That's it. Of yeah. all your organizer, we just have Nuno there. Hello, Nuno. Uh, I yeah. don't know. Yeah, I was not involved. He's my biggest fan. I can throw crazy ideas. <laughs> uh, yeah, no, so there's no there's no streaming either. Is is there? Um, no, no, we, so it's not something that we are taking care of at the moment because we're just trying to provide as many like spots for people to play as possible, but yeah, definitely we can look into that. And if people really want to watch, uh, we actually thought about it. Um, so our open D and D campaign, Cantus, um, our finales, cause it's played in seasons. So our season finales are usually quite spectacular. And a lot of people wanted to watch it last time, for example. So I think we can sort something out. Maybe not for all games, but for some, yeah. Yeah, all games that would be quite a, quite a challenge. Yeah. Uh, on that exactly. weekend, I will be running a panel, actually, on the subject of London as a setting. Okay. So uh, we should catch up on Discord with the organizer if they, they want to stream stuff, because I, I'd be keen to, um, to work out something. Uh, uh, again, uh, this weekend I was at CyberConv and not only they had a number of panels, but they had a, f quotation mark, free radio going on continuously in between the panels. And there were, there were some actual play also, not too much, but s some played in uh, French, uh, uh, by French Canadian. So even in the middle of the night for, for Paris and London, you, you would have Canadian yeah. running stuff. Uh, but uh, that was quite cool. So maybe there's something there that could be emulated. Although, uh, although I must say that convention uh, CyberConf was crazy impressive, and I believe it's in part well, there was a lot of very qualified people, very motivated people. That everybody agreed that it was kind of magic what happened there. But part of what happened is that That's several so nice. several physical conventions got cancelled and. So that online convention sort of spontaneously inherited the talent, the qualified people from three different conventions moving on together with, in the mood of okay, we need to do something. Let, let's mm -hmm. let's do it. Uh, on, That's amazing. Yeah, uh, I'm gonna have maybe this Wednesday. I'm gonna have them again on the show uh, for a quick mm -hmm. stream for them to tell about how it went. And uh, I think what I'll do also is uh, a panel much later. I would really like to organize a panel with someone from their team, but also someone from Concordia again, who is slightly different, but it's an ongoing sort of convention online. And Crowd Control, who we already had, and Virtual Horror Con, which took place also this weekend. I think it would be interesting to have those people explain, uh, tell about their experience and maybe ex exchange their ideas and stuff they they gone because a lot of stuff which was happening there I thought were brilliant ideas but at the same time they, they require some technical know-how because even just what they did within the Discord I I know you've got some very good Discord people <laughs> at London RPG community yes. so maybe you could geek out with, with some of them uh, at CyberConf if you would be curious but uh, that's yeah. awesome yeah I mean, we love to collaborate with other gaming clubs and conventions because they always have insight into things that we haven't thought about. 
like recently we've been contacted by a similar gaming club that just organizes games in Ohio and they just really wanted to talk to us and um Ohio. get insight on how we yeah well, that, that's... <laughs> in the US Ohio so i wonder if they're related to acadecon uh an acadecon line because i mean the people from crowd control they they were from columbus ohio already so the, yeah. the, the the people organizing convention and they contacted me semi randomly and i was it the one be the same thing. i'm not prepared to say if there is some overlap between those people i have no idea i'm wondering but, but it... if not yeah. it's, it's quite crazy because the, the people from crowd control uh during the interview i was a bit like wait, wait a second you're from ohio I'm from the RPG Academy, which is US based and has got most of its hosts in Ohio as well, but Dayton, I think. Wow. And I was like, You don't know those guys? <laughs> Why are you getting in touch with me okay. and not with them? What's because... going on in Ohio? Yeah, I don't know. Maybe it's, uh, <laughs> it's, it's after London, of course. Maybe it's kind of the center of role playing games in the world after London. So. Wow. Well. Yeah. <laughs> One question. One question. Uh, I want, I'm reverting a bit back, but one question I want to start asking uh, everyone uh, is: uh, What's your routine like at the moment? Uh, it's, it's at the moment. Yeah, it's interesting. You, you not only like, yeah, like all of us, you are under uh, social distancing uh, slash uh, quarantine condition, uh, but uh, you're also in Russia. So, what's your routine like uh, every day? Well, um, I am quite lucky with my situation at the moment because I'm able to be at home with part of my family um, and we have enough space to kind of um, social distance from each other. So upon arrival from London, I had to be in quarantine for two weeks and didn't see my family at all. But now I'm out of that and I've been spending time with my dad and my grandpa, which has been great. Um, and my days have been filled with organizing LRC con to be honest uh, that's that's been my kind of eight hour day <laughs> work day um, I'm not I'm off work at the moment uh, for this month at least um, which gives me like a lot of space to hang out with family and a lot of space to um, engage with my creative hobbies such as LRC um, so yeah I'm just kind of chilling. And I think at this time, if you go through the day and you're okay and you didn't feel bad and you kind of managed to get through it, I think that's already an achievement. Like everybody's feeling quite demotivated and quite, you know, uh, under maybe pressure, maybe like mental health strain. So I think like appreciating small things and just, you know, talk to your family, um, you know, wake up on time, kind of have a nice meal. This kind of things I'm trying to keep up, yeah. It's quite interesting how the situation. Uh, yeah, I, I think I think you're entirely right. Uh, on one hand, it's nice that to see encouragement to for people to engage in projects uh, while they yeah. they are in this situation. But at the same time, just coping and managing to to be balanced. Yeah, it's already a, a huge achievement, especially if you have uh, children at home right. and stuff like that. Uh, also that yes it's it's quite interesting to see more people come online to to play uh and sometimes i, I like to to share my experience of this weekend because my brother managed to find a way for us to play a board game via steam uh, but not only play via okay. steam which is something we uh, i could do with him somewhat easily but he managed to find a way which was easy enough for my mother to join <laughs> so we played splendor uh, Amazing. Uh, it's funny because for my family um in a way i'm more in contact in touch with them than i am normally because i feel more obliged to check with them uh, or they're going they, they don't often take the initiative of calling so it's up to my brother and i to to push yeah. things and uh, yeah it was i was very happy that we managed to play that game and uh, hopefully it will become a weekly thing. It's funny also how, because people again playing online rather than uh, in real life, I've got my very first tabletop role-playing group 
in Belgium, the people with who I properly started role playing, uh, I've haven't been in touch with them that much when I was visiting the family. I very rarely had the time to, to see them. The last time I saw them was when I got married. Uh, yeah, they're launching an online table. So so they sent out, they tagged That's different so people, including myself, to to play again with them. So that, that could be yeah. <laughs> quite interesting after, poof, I don't know, uh, eight, maybe ten years without playing with them, uh, yeah. playing with them again. Amazing. Yeah, it definitely brings more people together to play role-playing games that otherwise wouldn't because it's fairly manageable online and um, you can engage with it more than usual maybe because you don't have to spend time commuting to a venue and back. Uh, I know some of our members and some of my friends have just been playing like every day, almost every game that we've been putting up. There's been so much demand because... People just need that kind of escape and that kind of, you know, um, creative outlet during, you know, a difficult time. Um, I've not been playing a lot online for some reason in the past couple of weeks that I've been quarantined, but I'm definitely going to. I am playing four games in the LRC con and I'm running two, so it's going to be a bit crazy. <laughs> um, so, yeah, looking forward to that. Um, you need and, to grab yeah, your laptop and, and... then because uh, the computer you started uh, the stream with, we had some issues with it. <laughs> yes. Yeah, no, I'll, I'll do it from a proper computer. Don't worry. Um, I'm also organizing a couple of games from people outside of um, kind of tabletop RPG industry. Uh, I don't know if you know, I volunteer as a front desk receptionist at the Vagina Museum. Oh. Who, uh, which, yeah, which has been struggling with having to close their main source of income, which is the museum itself, of course. So they're just trying to fundraise a bit. And um, I wanted to help the team by running some games for fellow volunteers and staff. Um, so they've been super excited for that as well. So that that's coming too. So I've just been trying to fill my time with more and more games in the future. That's cool. Have you been in touch? I don't know, I'm just throwing uh, crazy ideas. Have you been in touch with yeah. uh, Naomi from uh, No More Damsels about that? Because yeah, Naomi and I are friends. We've we've been in touch over this period of time quite a few, quite a few times, and um, she will be running two games at the LRC Con as well. Cool, awesome. Uh, uh, yeah. One of the things I keep wondering about with what's happening is once we go back to normal. I'm wondering how many people will go on anyway since they had this experience will go on playing online yeah. because now they're, they're familiar with it they got the tools they, they developed the mastery and the practice and for many of them I think they realize that it's not as bad as they, the tool it would be on the contrary it's it's as good but different than uh, for, compared to playing online uh, do you think London RPG com community will be will keep those online games because before now as far as i know there was no online gaming offer at london rpg community that's a very sneaky question is it it's um, not my time to ask <laughs> curveballs questions um, or sneaky questions yeah well the short answer is we don't know we're gonna have to see and um it's true that we didn't have any online games before, and I will admit myself, I was quite skeptical of it because I'm, for me, role-playing games is human interaction first and foremost, so that's what I'm here for. Um, and playing online kind of takes that element a little bit, as I thought. But actually, after trying it a couple of times, I think it's a fantastic way to catch up with friends anyway. Um, is it better than in person? That's arguable, so we'll have to see. I think most people will say no, and they still want to see their friends and um, playmates, so to speak, um, in person. But um, we can definitely think into expanding into online and face-to-face -face games for people who are not able to join um, online face-to-face. Uh, Maybe people who are not very able to leave their house regularly or people who live far away um, and people with special requir um, requirements, like definitely we can look into that. After we've mastered 
the setup with online gaming. Um, I think we will go back to some of the games, but um, we'll just have to take it one step at a time, to be honest. I was wondering because uh, uh, even at, uh, when I'm playing with the London RPG community, I don't play that much to uh, with Cantus. Uh, I tend to play uh, other mm -hmm. types of games at the moment. Yeah. Uh, I'm not even aware is the Cantus ongoing and share camping still going on online at the moment? Is it canon? Well, quotation mark canon. What is going on uh, in online yeah. games? Yeah, absolutely. It's been. Um been a lot of games running business as usual except online so yeah the plot has been progressing um we are in the middle of the season i'm blanking six uh maybe some members can correct me if i'm wrong six i think it's six um so yeah um it's yeah it's definitely canon it's definitely going strong and no problem there and people are so invested in the um season plot and so invested in other like personal storylines for their characters that there's no way in the world that they were gonna drop that like no <laughs> so uh when is the the next end of season planned for in Kentas at the moment do you think it might happen in uh, why we still not? Why might, might it happen online? Because uh, that's the situation. It was planned for June, mm -hmm. but it's tight. We yeah. <laughs> we don't know. Um, as with everything, we're taking it one week, month at a time. Uh, so seeing if um, if we're able to gather. Um, in person, we'll probably do season finale. We'll like to do season finale in person, but of course, um, we can't plan for it. So we'll have to look into different options. We're not going to leave our players without a season finale. Like that's that would be just cruel, and I would I would be sad, and I'm sure players would be super sad as well. Well, at least earlier you were mentioning that some people thought it would be nice to have the finale being streamed or recorded somehow. Yeah. If it's online, it's that. much more technically feasible than doing it, uh, let's right. say, at Bad Moon Cafe, which is a nice venue, but <laughs> to record and stream something from yeah. there, that would be an absolute nightmare. You're right. Yeah. I mean, honestly, I would love if we could like stream a season finale. So maybe keep an eye on that. We'll see. Uh, we'll see. Uh, just throwing a question, I should check up with them but have you heard uh, from the different venues you work with at london rpg community do you know what's what's their current situation uh, bad moon cafe um, 640 yeah. east and limehouse uh, i don't remember what it was. yeah yeah well they're all closed at the moment um but that's that's all i know to be honest i don't know if they're struggling i'm imagining there are to some extent so um we, we will have to check in with them um soon but all i know is that they're closed yeah yeah i should i should check with bad moon cafe here uh, if they got anything going on because in other places other cities i know uh, uh gaming um cafe uh, have been running campaigns to, to find some kind of support okay. online so i don't know if yes. there's anything like that uh planned ahead we got nuno finally in the chat room uh apparently the the twitch connection is kind of patchy so uh i'm sorry about that i don't have fiber i'm zone one but i don't have fiber here in london uh but the the recording on youtube should be much better because it's recorded directly on my computer hopefully if it doesn't crash uh but yeah if uh nuno don't, do you have a question is there something you think we should we should definitely talk about uh, as part of London uh, RPG community uh, convention. And in the meantime, uh, I can try to throw. Uh, so you had your first go at uh, game mastering online already, Dasha? Did you try that or is it. Is I've it gonna not. No, so I've not tried game mastering. I played online. Mm -hmm. But yeah. Running my um, Beyonce game on Friday will be the first time actually GMing online. 
So are you going to be, or do you see that happening? Are you going to be strictly audio? Do you want to use Roll20 maybe to, or something else to, to show pictures? Uh, I know for Cat Tulu, I prepared a, almost a slight presentation of different scenes to put people in the mood. So I guess with uh, Yonseverse, you could have, uh, I mean, there's, a, there's lots of good pictures of Beyonce you could use, I imagine. There is a lot of good pictures of Beyonce, but don't spoil it for my players, but there will definitely be um, some visuals involved, let's say. Okay, cool. And yeah. it's easy because it is diceless, so I don't need to um, check the roles of players during the game. Um, I will have to think how I'm going to distribute the points that are awarded and uh, spent during the game, but that's that's a different issue. Uh little personal question because you i found out of a, yeah. that you were going to russia just before we, we went on isolation and we didn't have a, yeah. a proper conversation about that is your your plan and uh the, the yeah to, to come back here to london in the near future um yeah yeah i mean uh, i'm off work um for a it's a temporary you know, um, situation. So I'll be back to work at some point when we're able to go to work. Um, but yeah, um, as soon as I'm able to travel back, I'll probably shoot. Hopefully we need a lot of people who do research in the medical field. <laughs> uh, we, yeah. Uh, hopefully... yeah, a lot of my colleagues have been helping out with, um, cause if, someone doesn't know I work in bio biological science. So, uh, in the lab. So a lot of my, um, colleagues are not able to go to work to do experiments in the lab at the moment. And they have been, um, redirected voluntarily to, um, do some experiments and some tests to help with the coronavirus research, uh, which has been, yeah, quite a lot of, um, contribution from university. And they also made a, um, an app for tracking symptoms so yeah uh work is not stopping in that in that perspective yeah do you have any uh, professional insight in the into the situation or, or do you find uh, uh the information is conveyed and the sort of things uh, about covid-19 um it's not i i would not want to share my personal fine, professional fine. insights um, I definitely do have opinions, but um, maybe let's let's keep it for a personal conversation. Yeah, sure, sure. Uh, yeah, I don't know. Uh, we got a bit more time. Is there anything you'd like to talk about? Have you noticed anything interesting uh, in the world of role-playing games or any other domains at the moment? Is there a new Beyoncé album coming out? Uh, did, you, did she sing Imagine recently? Good. She's been silent for two months. There's been nothing. So I need content. So this is why I'm running the game. Uh, what's been interesting, um, I'm just really enjoying watching all of our players descending into different like formats of coping. I love it. Some people are playing 15 hours of RPGs a week. Just so you know. Have fun. I'm so, jealous. <laughs> so jealous. I know. Um, shout out to Johnny. <laughs> and people have been um, just really finding comfort in that. And then I just find that so cool. Um, and I also really enjoyed um, seeing new GMs join recently and kind of putting up their games um, to try. I had to maybe ask or con do a little bit of convincing to try because I know <laughs> they've been meaning to. Um, but what really impressed me is then one of our players and a friend of mine, Polina, who you know well, um, I asked her if she'd like to run the game and she was up for it. And as her first system of choice, this person, mind you, hasn't really run games before. She decided to run an improvised PBTA system that's going to fit a certain vibe that she had in mind. What a legend. Usually people start 
GMing, you know, Dungeon World or D&D or something that, you know, makes sense in your brain. No, she decided to go for something completely alternative and homebrew. And I just, I'm obsessed. Yeah. I just love seeing this kind of initiatives and help to like accommodate that growth. Like, it's amazing. I already mentioned uh, Paulina in our episode about London RPG community because uh, I remember the first time I met her, she showed up at a London Le Drinks and Dice. Yeah. And and she was the one. Uh, well, I asked her, "Have you have you tried game mastering something?" Uh, if I remember correctly, she had, she had only played Dungeons and Dragons Fifth Edition, and yeah. and she, oh yeah, but it's not really my thing. And I know. Oh, wait, wait, what did you try game mastering? And she told me she tried to game master a cyberpunk game, but yeah, through home home brewing Fifth Edition. <laughs> and I was like, ooh, that's that's a bit hardcore. <laughs> You should maybe yeah. try another yeah. game, but since then, she, <laughs> since then she has tried so many, so many new games. I mean, she was actually in person in our Dragon Meat episode, uh, part two. Yes. So, and she, I really she, like that episode. Oh, thank you. Really good, and chat with Ursa Dice was awesome. It, it's okay; it was not too long. <laughs> it was the end of the day. Right, I was enjoying it. <laughs> I, I played yeah, with him. I, I played with him online since then. I played some super normal one of his games that was quite cool. Yeah. I like how every every interview that you do just ends up like just praising Ursa Dice. I love like that. <laughs> I think you should make that a segment. In today's version of praising Ursa Dice. I'm trying to praise everyone. I'm trying to be very positive. I I plug myself all the time, especially on the Discord of London RPG community, always saying, oh, actually, it's interesting you say that because in episode 12 of the Rollies podcast, we covered that subject. But uh, I also love to plug uh, other people. It was it was funny, CyberConf, I kept plugging uh, content in English to the, the French speakers. <laughs> like they had oh, a, wow, that's... They Very reverse situation. They had a panel about um, uh, female superheroes, and uh, I kept recommending stuff like "Is It a Plane" um, by a, a uh, English game designers, and uh, "Supernormal" by Ursida, so uh, of course, as well. Awesome. But yeah, Ursida Ur is is lovely. Uh, it's another. I, I'd like pre my. I don't really plan to do it very soon, but. Uh, Probably what could be the weirdest of all panels I could have would be to have Ursi Dice and two other individuals I confused him with <laughs> and see the three of them get along. Nice. The, the Elucubration Ursi Day blogger uh, and then yeah. the the actual ex person who exists who's uh, uh, Eric Nieudan, the designer of uh, Café Mac uh, Macchiato Monsters which is a small mm -hmm. role-playing game. Uh, and he, he's French, he designs games, and he lives in Highland. So I did not make that up. I just confused him with uh, Sid <laughs> Yeah, well, you should definitely introduce them. Yeah, that could be a fun, uh, a fun panel. Yeah, uh, I think that's it for today, unless you've got something else to plug. Um... I just hope lots of people join our games and just have fun with us. That's that's my message today and always. Well, I will inclu include the link in the description of this episode, so people awesome, please go check it out. And uh, if any patron is listening to this, uh, I don't know if you've seen my message. Uh, I'm running a poll among the people supporting the show via Patreon to see if I should include the Café Rollist, those ones, the ones which are streamed on my regular podcast feed, uh, so more people could listen to them in those uh, difficult times. And since I release a lot of them, well, it's still quite a bit of work, and uh, the more content I put on iTunes, the more likely my show will get more noticed by more listeners, and it also it promotes better my my guest here on, on Café Rollist. So... Uh, hoping for the best. So and uh, yeah, don't forget next weekend, this Sunday I think. Yeah, it's gonna be May tenth. I'm gonna I'm gonna run this panel 
So if you take uh, either, maybe, I don't know, it might be a part of uh, the LRC convention or not, uh, it's possible. But if, if not, if you're taking a break from that, yeah, it's on the 12th, uh, April 12th. I will be having a panel about London as a tabletop role-playing game setting. We're gonna have three awesome individuals from the industry. We're gonna have the return of Dr. Dr. Uh, Lynn Hardy from Chaosium, so she can tell us about Rivers of London role-playing game. We're gonna have uh, Andy, I think it's his first name, Andy Peregrine from the team of Modifius who's been working on Fall of London, the supplement for Vampire the Masquerade. And we're gonna have uh, another friend of London RPG Academy, I believe, Sean Hunt from uh, the London Master Guide, uh, who's developing this uh, sort of travel guide, but with a tabletop RPG flavor to it about London. So hopefully that should be an interesting panel Oh, Nuno is asking, what will you be playing at together at home? Tell us about the juicy games. I think we already did, Nuno. It's just you arrived late to the game. Is there any game you're going to play where you, you forgot to mention, Dasha? I think he might be asking you. Oh, me? I don't know. I need to check what is available. Uh, and again, if people are interested in playing Cats of Cthulhu, I could be running it again. But uh, yeah, I just need people to volunteer to be players uh, at my table but uh, yeah I'd like to play games the, the thing is uh, with my son it's it's and uh, and yeah. Persephilia working from yeah. home it's tough to balance uh, I'd like to do that full time but uh, playing but um, it's tough but I, I'll definitely go have a look and see if there, there's something uh, yeah, sure there's is. something I can well, play maybe some dungeon world with, with you Nuno it's been a while uh, I wanted to play I, I saw dungeon world I, I signed myself up and cancelled several times myself to a Dungeon World game played at uh, London RPG Community. I failed to remember the name of the Game Master. I really apologize. I would really like to play yeah. with him. But uh, yeah, life got in the way. So so there you go. So that's it. Uh, uh, Dasha, where can people... F <laughs> Sorry? That's me. I'm playing... Um... I'm going to play a bunch of games with our new BGMs because I just really want to be there for them and support them. No pressure. I'm going to play. Control. No. Um, I'm going to play with Polina in the improvised, powered by apocalypse world engine game. Um, I'm very excited for that. I'm planning to um, join Lasers and Feelings that Naomi is going to run. I'm going to join a couple of D and D one shots to support my friends and just be a friendly face and their first like DMing with us. Um, so yeah, yeah. And I mean, the biggest hit was Monster Hearts that Nuno is running. So I think he wants me to plug that. I think that's where he's <laughs> doing with this question. Isn't it full um, already? It yes, yes. So we might have to repeat this because, I mean, it's a great system. And since Critical Role played it, uh, and as I already mentioned, I love Avery Adler and every, like, all of the games she makes. So, I mean, it's a, it's a triple bingo. It's amazing. So it's understandable that it's full. Yeah, I need to try Monster Hearts. I think uh, it might share, have common points in common with uh, Masks which is another PBTA game, which uh, I love. I, I need to try more PBTA games. Yeah, there's some mask available. Uh, I, I won't be signing up to it because I'd like to play stuff I haven't played yet. But uh, if people want to try masks, a new generation, there's going to be at least one session, maybe several at your, your convention. So they should definitely sign up to it. Okay, definitely. that's it. I think I'm going to yeah okay. rush to... First, I need to wake up my son from his nap. And then I need oh. to upload this video on YouTube because since it was not very good on Twitch, uh, yeah, hopefully it will be better on, on YouTube. Uh, thank, thank you so much for joining us, Dasha. Good to see you. Is it is my pronunciation somewhat correct, Das Vidania? <laughs> perfect. Uh, yeah, did you say where can people find you? I don't think you you did. People can find me on Twitter as Darbell607. Darbell with a double L, 607. And uh, 
if you Google London RPG community and find our meetup page, I am there as one of the organizers. So hit me up. It's Dar Bell like a bell in a church, not a there's no E at the end. Uh... No. Like <sighs> well, thanks everyone who tuned in or watching this on YouTube. Please consider checking our main show, The Royalist Podcast, uh, which, by the way, uh, the last episode at Dragon Meat included London RPG Community uh, as well as Earth and Dice, as we said. Uh, the next one, of which I really need to get back at editing, will be the final part of our series dedicated fully to London RPG Community with an interview with several members including you Dasha and uh, uh, an actual play in the world in the Kentus X-Men so uh, uh, before the end of this month that should be released and there for you that's quite good content please consider uh, like this video subscribe to the YouTube channel check us on Twitter at RollisPod or TikTok or Instagram and if you like this content and would like to encourage me to do better maybe have a better internet connection please do go support us via Patreon uh, it's really it really allows me to to do more and uh, when things get back to normal to be able to attend convention and record there and this sort of things and uh, yeah and there's plenty of bonus there's 80 or so exclusive Café Rollist uh, archive which is available there. Thank you very much. Bye.